You gonna do the honors? All right, man. All right, man. Let's go. What do you got? Oh, you got a little pop top. All right. Oh man, I yeah. can't open this thing. All right, here we go. There it is. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. So what do you got there? That's a it's a <laughs> hell of a hell of a beer. It's a hefty beer. It's a, a big go- it's a, a can growl, it's a crawler for those. We actually started a YouTube uh, channel as well, so we'll be posting this. So if you want to take a look at it, this massive thing right here. I just walked to um, walk down the street. We have a tasting room um, from Kilowatt Brewery. They're out here in Kearney Mesa is where they brew their beer, but this is a, a little tasting room. It's really cool. A lot of like, <laughs> it's very Ocean Beach, and that's the town and uh, neighborhood in San Diego I live in, which is like super classic surf, like hippie town. And they got like black lights all over the place, like really out there, like kind of art all over the place. Really cool place to go. And I am drinking their mango pale ale. And I actually got talking to the person there. uh, One of their freshest that they've just tapped. So um, tastes really good, actually, for a pale ale. More so uh, they describe it kind of as a fruit smoothie because there's a lot of leftover residual fruit from all the mangoes that they use. And I just was reading up on it and they use like some of the most sought after mangoes in the world. These Alfonso mangoes out of India. Uh, so it's really uh, not a bad beer, but it's a ton of it. And I'll drink it this whole entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a three Floyd's gumball head. I feel like if you live in Chicago, you've drank this before. Um, it's something that's I feel like on tap everywhere. Uh, three Floyd's. I feel like Chicago claims it as its own, even though it's over just over the border in Indiana. Like Monster, right? Yeah, it's in Munster. Um, but a gumball head, the gumball head, if you haven't had it, is American wheat ale. So it's pretty light, easy drinking. It's got a little bit of a lemony finish at the end. Um, the Three Floyds actually closed down their brew pub, I guess, at the beginning of the pandemic. I obviously That's haven't I been saw. there since then. Yeah, it still hasn't reopened, but they did reopen the retail kiosk, I read. So you can go in, you can buy beer there. You can buy, they have a distillery there as well. So you can buy some of their some of that stuff you can buy merchandise things like that but i guess the brew pub still has not reopened yet which is kind of disappointing because that place is pretty cool that's crazy i know so my brother and his friends do um dark lord days there where they do a lot of their like rare releases and they're mm-hmm. they, they would like literally rent a limo and go there and drink all day and wait for the the releases and i remember seeing that they were supposed to yeah. like build that place into like a beer amusement park i remember seeing like renderings for it so that kind of sucks to hear that yeah it's not doing so hot but i also feel <laughs> excuse me i feel like three floyds is the like t- prototypical transitional beer from you know you just got out of college uh, you, you move to the city or something and you go over to your friend's house and you're like, I'm an adult now. I'm bringing over <laughs> free Floyd zombie dust or gumball head and look at me, right? Yeah. I'm no longer bringing over the bush light. <laughs> zombie dust used to be like incredibly hard to get your hands on and you have to drive over to Munster to get it. Mm-hmm. But now, now it's pretty much in every liquor store uh, around me, at least um, super easy to get now. But it's, I mean, I still have a good zombie dust, still have a good gumball head here and there. Yeah. And just coming back to this mango pale ale, this is way more, like they say, it is more of like a fruit smoothie type of beer. I, like the hop level is really pushed back on this one. So if you're somebody who maybe doesn't like the pale ales because of how hoppy they are, well, this would be an awesome beer to have. Mango pale ale by Kilowatt. Uh, really, really tasty. Enjoying it. Saw you posted some tacos today. Where'd you go for dinner, man? I did. I went to uh, Taqueria Chingon. I've been there. It just opened up like a couple months ago. It's on uh, <laughs> Western Ave. By me. <laughs> no, I'm not even sure if I pronounced that correctly, but it's a uh, pretty sweet spot. I've been there like two or three times just in the past couple of weeks. It's so good. It's cheap. Um, definitely some of the best tacos I've had in the city. But, um, you know, if I'm taking taco recommendations. Uh, I saw you posted a picture of Del Sol's tacos. Yeah, I'd mine, like to see. Say. If I could find some tacos that compare to this, because these duck carnitas tacos are like the best tacos I've ever had at this place. So definitely check that spot out if you're in the Logan Square Bucktown area. It's a new spot. But, um, you know, this episode I really wanted to get into. We don't have any guests or anything. You know, I wanted to get into kind of our backstories a little bit and more talk to you about something that. You know, you and I lived lived together uh, for a long time um, yeah. in college. You know, we met uh, at University of Dubuque and then 
lived together there. We lived together at ISU, you know, mm-hmm. future episodes, maybe we'll talk more about that. Um, but you s- recently moved to California, semi-recently. Semi-recently, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, how long ago was that? You know, what kind of sparked that? Um, if you want to just like touch on that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we were living, um, my now wife, we were living together up in Uptown, uh, it was the last neighborhood in Chicago we lived in. And we were kind of just, you know, up for up for anything, up for an adventure, looking kind of just for an opportunity to maybe move around while we could. Um, and I know we had some doors open uh, in San Diego, actually. I think we only went here one time before actually moving here. And my, my oldest brother lives in Santa Monica. So we've been kind of to the area of Southern California a couple of times before. And we just, you know, had a door open and we kind of like, we're talking about it one night and just looked at each other like, let's just do it. Let's just, I mean, why not? Let's just try it out. Let's go for it. Sold all of our crap (laughs) in Uptown, which was uh, 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 an episode in and of itself. The the amount of random people coming to pick up random things, like this old lady came to try to take our bookshelf with one (laughs) screwdriver and was like, I can disassemble it and put it in my car on my own. She was in our apartment for a good three hours, Uh, (laughs) sold everything, drove out to San Diego. And yeah, we've been here for about three years this summer. Yeah. And you've been, so obviously didn't know anybody there. You guys just moved out there. Um, Didn't have any like friends or anything besides your brother. It was, you Mm -hmm. know, about an hour away, I think up in Santa Monica there. Right. So Yeah. So, I mean, you've been joining volleyball teams. I think you told me. Um, and one thing that kind of sparked my interest a little bit was you said you joined an improv school, right? And I guess I wanted yeah. to talk more about that and just see like, how did you get started with that? What interested you in improv? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I've always, I've always enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed like Saturday Night Live, albeit that's like sketch comedy. There's a lot of just like improvisational comedy in there as well. Um, and I don't know, I I must've been dropping hints at it or something. And my, my wife, Crystal just bought me a class, just an introductory class, a one-time class, uh, to the local theater in San Diego, finest city, which bases a lot of the teaching off of, off of second city in Chicago, actually. And I just went to the class and it, it, it was really like the first class where I just really enjoyed it. Um, it's just, it's for people that I don't know, or just goofy in general and don't take themselves too seriously and i just uh met some really cool people there and we actually uh ended up going through like the program together our class like stuck together which is unusual they say uh and we graduated together and um a couple folks from that that graduating class and i uh created a team and we started to like do performances on the stage we started to do like these like cage matches which is like two teams perform the audience chooses the winner type of deal um yeah and we really started to like have a lot of fun with it and just enjoy it i mean it's a really tiny theater um but it's just a lot of fun uh and then you know COVID happened so that kind of put it on the shelf for a little bit but we're actually we had practice yesterday so we're kind of getting back together shaking off the cobwebs and you know seeing you know if and when things open up if we could start putting shows on cool yeah so i mean like i've never been to an improv show um i'm sure you know some of our listeners maybe haven't either so like how would you describe improv to somebody who's never been to an improv show and is like is there a standard format that like every show follows or uh no i mean like most people the way like my like uncles or like aunts will be like oh what is improv and you're just like have you seen whose line is it anyway like that Mm -hmm. is game improv where it's like very kind of structured there's a leader which would be like drew carey in that scenario uh, we at Finest Fina City, we're not as gamey as that. We're a little bit more uh, like scene based, you know? Um, so like what it's like, you're in a dark theater, you're, you're going to have a host for the day and they're going to kind of introduce you to like, say we were doing a cage match. So that's when they'll tell you what you're doing. Or if that team is just, they call them house teams, right? And these are like the teams that are in the rotation and like they have fan bases. So people come and watch the house team. So you were the house team, is that? No, we didn't make it up to a house team, but okay. I, we were we were fairly new. And we started doing cage matches. And then the goal was like to try to be a house team. But I mean, it, it's up to the, the team's form, what they're doing, and then the audience's recommendations. It's a very immersive experience. You're going to have a lot of fun if you go. Um, it's very like intimate. Uh, our, our theater in general is super 
close to the stage. It's, it's just a tiny, tiny theater. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there is structure behind the scenes too. Like people are always like, it's crazy how you think of these things. And like, you just go from one thing to the next. I mean, there is teaching to it, right? We went through a class and there is like structure and form to it as well. Gotcha. So, so obviously then no two shows are the same, right? I mean, if you did right. a show at 7 PM for an audience and then did the show at 9 PM, it'd be a completely different show. Yeah. So I know you've told me before that you did stand up or at least tried it. <laughs> I did one. Time, and, yeah. and you said that it was nerve wracking, but I'm wondering, <laughs> is there more or less pressure doing stand up versus improv? Because stand up, you have, you can rehearse. Uh, and you can kind of do that same show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Over, over and over. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I could speak too much to that, but yeah, obviously in stand up you could rehearse and you have like your, you know, your like game plan going out there, your setups and everything, but it's still like, it's just you as well. So, I mean, you're completely on an Island by yourself. Um, it's completely up to you if you fail, if you do well, whereas improv, uh, you have like team members where if you're having an off night, maybe one of your teammates can kind of give you a bunch of gifts and help you out and really steer the direction of the scene. Um, and what's a gift? Is that just like a kind of a slam dunk? Easy. Yeah, a gift would be something? like, if I like, I set you up for something like, Oh, Hey, Evan, I didn't notice you now have a huge cane and you are homeless. Like, okay gotcha. now you know exactly who you are right you i can be your, to, like, that character of, yeah okay you don't have to think about it i i gift you that character gotcha okay and like you said covid kind of shut everything down obviously people couldn't go in inside this was an indoor thing so um you know how did you keep the team together how did you practice things like that during covid when everything was shut down uh i mean we moved pretty much how everything moved uh, online right uh, it was a weird experience. Um, we started out like practicing in a park, socially distant, and then started practicing online with Zoom. Like some some teams were having like performances on there. We never did any of that. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like such an intimate thing, like you said, where it's you know the audience is right in front of you. All of every you know what is that? Ten people probably standing on a stage uh, next to each other. So it's like a very close thing. I just imagine that would be hard to do and hard to kind of get that experience over zoom or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. I, I would, uh, you know, hope it's the same thing with people at work as well to where you kind of need to be there in person. Obviously it's a little different, but the same kind of idea where it's just, in my opinion, uh, in person is uh, much more enjoyable. Cool. Yeah. I mean, so it was just something that, you know, you had, you had mentioned to me before and I was just like, man, I did not know that he was into improv, but it sounds like you're sticking with it and uh, it'd be cool to see a show sometime. Yeah. It's definitely something. Yeah. I mean, if you, if anyone ever moves to a new area, I think you just, you know, try some things out, join some, some scenes, um, take some improv classes. It's a great way to get out of your comfort zone. Right. And, and really kind of figure out, how to be quick on your feet, which can translate into other things in life. Yeah, for sure. So with that sports. being said, <laughs> yeah, let's get to sports, sports, uh, sports. the next topic, which, so did you see that there's this report that the Suns coach might be the coach of the year? And yeah, I think there's a lot of people Williams. that are, do you agree with that? I think there's a lot of people that are pissed that Tom Thibodeau is not the runaway yeah. coach of the year. I mean, they're both worthy of it. Um, for Phoenix to have a winner out in the desert there uh, is is super difficult. They haven't been a good team in a long time. Same with the Knicks. I mean, and, and the Knicks are the mecca of basketball. Yeah, I, I could see why people would be upset. Um, I could also, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I mean, they're both they both just absolutely killed this year, right? No one yeah. thought at the beginning of the year the Suns or the Knicks were going to be this good. I mean, fuck. The Knicks were in the same position with the Bulls like a month and a half ago, and they just closed out as strong as ever, which is like what Tom Thibodeau does. Mm -hmm. And they moved all the way up, I think, to like the fourth seed by the end of the year. I remember they were like jock, Justin, jock, jocking, jocking position <laughs> with the Bulls. And then they just absolutely kind of just kept on going, and the Bulls stink. Yeah. So my, my only thing is like the Suns were eh, and then they got Chris Paul, and now sure. they're good. Right. Yeah. So it's like, is it really the coach that did that or was it 
more so that they got Chris Paul, they got a leader, they got one of the best point guards maybe Paul ever. Hammer. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't hurt, you know. You know, and <laughs> Tibbs has got Julius Randle, who had a hell of a year, but yeah, would he have had a hell of a year without Tibbs? Maybe would he have, you know, would the Knicks be as good as they were without Tibbs? I don't think so. So that's yeah. why I'm I'm on the Tibbs train. I love Tibbs. I'm you know, I wish well, he was course. still with the Bulls. Yeah, I think everyone but... in Chicago still loves Tibbs. Also, <laughs> just a point there, Derek Rose got traded at the deadline to New York as well from Detroit, which I think like since he joined, uh their winning percentage like skyrocketed as well. Um, which I think gives Derek Rose a lot of credit. I mean, he was like down and out remember just on the calves with Dwayne wade like that team yeah. was garbage he looked not great um just didn't fit there people were like wondering if his career was coming to a close and now he's gonna watch watch him in the playoffs he's gonna be meaningful minutes he's getting that kind of crafty cerebral effect of a point guard where he knows kind of how to impact the game not just athletically but also mentally uh and i just i think everyone loves derrick rose as well so awesome oh, yeah. team to root for for sure so now that we touched on the playoffs, I'd love to go through the the bracket here. This uh, first time <laughs> play in tournament. Yeah, be it's honest, a little bit confusing to look it, at. It. It's just... Yeah. And I thought it was, I, I mean, waking up today, I could have told you it was uh, single elimination. Uh, the, yeah. the losers were out, but that is not the case. No. Yeah. I thought it was going to be more like a wild card thing, like in MLB or something. Right. But uh, it looks like if you're the nine or the 10, that first game, if you lose that one, you're out. I think you tell for me for them. I'm not, I'm not looking at it right now. Yeah. It, it, to me, what it looked like is like they and had the these win- games today. The losers go on and play the higher seed. The winners go on to then play the I don't know, like the losers, no. and then they go to the <laughs> over so, seed. So you got you got Indiana and Charlotte played today, I believe already, right? Yeah, and Indiana kicked the shit out of them. Yeah. And so the so Charlotte's out. They're out. So, out? In, yeah. So Indiana will play the loser of the Washington Boston game, which is currently going on now. Yeah. So they'll play the loser of that game. The winner of that game goes on to play the two seed Brooklyn. So, and then, and then I guess the winner of the Indiana Boston or Washington game goes on to play the Sixers. So I guess makes sense. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> the nine or the 10, it's, you know, if you lose that game, you're out. But if you're that seven or eight, it's uh, win and move on, lose and move on as well. The seating based. Yeah. Affects your seating. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So like you said, Indiana and Charlotte's already played, right? We know who's, who's going to be in there. Boston and Washington, you said is going on right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have this? are up two at halftime, actually 54, 52. Okay. So close game. What about Memphis and the Spurs? That's tomorrow. Same with the Lakers and the Warriors, okay. which is a hot topic over here in California. Is it? Oh yeah, perfect. So we can put the buddy to watch it tomorrow. It's a big deal. Those are two good teams. I, the West is just that is just a ridiculous stack of teams there. Yeah, it's been the start of the East. NBA for a couple of years. How long? Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay, so good. Then we can go through this without too much. Oh, um, my dog. If you just heard him, he's chasing his tail. <laughs> he's having a great time. <laughs> All right, so you, so who do you got between Boston and Washington that's going on right now? Um, I, I'm i going to go, man, I was such a hater on Westbrook at the beginning of the year to where now I'm just going to completely 180 that and just be all for him. So let's go Washington. All right, I love it. Also, right, did so you got- realize the logo for the Wizards? If you've ever looked at it, the middle line is the Washington Monument. It's not just a part of a basketball. Oh, I did not. Wow. <laughs> I don't think anyone noticed that. It's one of like, <laughs> yeah. the subtle logos in there i also speaking of logos and to completely like sidetrack and digress here but portland trailblazers take a look at their logo and tell me what that means to you i don't think anyone ever questions it yeah i have no idea yeah trailblazer yeah it's a cool logo the suns it's a sun the bulls it's a bull Mm -hmm. right the jazz it's a music note yeah trailblazers yeah it's just a design that the owner at the time when he, they became Portland Trailblazers, his like brother or uncle, I remember, uh, was it was an artist, and it's supposed to symbolize two teams converging on each other because there's five lines on each side, and then the, the 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 bend in there of the two teams coming together is just supposed to like symbolize the athleticism of the sport. 
So it's a literal like art wow. piece as a logo. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's really interesting. I would never have guessed that. And yeah, I've never even like looked at that one and been like, oh, what is it? That's yeah, that's totally interesting. Yeah. Um, so Sorry. then if you got Washington, <laughs> Washington, Indiana, I think I'm a big Westbrook fan as well. I think I would take Washington to go on and play Philly. Also, Karis LeVert in Indiana just got ruled out today. And I don't know for how long because of health and safety protocol. Hmm. A big player to that's lose. a big it's loss a big player to lose yeah but so then you'd have boston would play brooklyn if we have washington winning and you think brooklyn's going all the way yeah or i'm who sorry got, who do you got winning at all the winner washington would actually want to play brooklyn and boston would go on to play indiana so you'd have boston against indiana if they lose gotcha who do i have winning at all yeah I feel like everyone. Jazz, the Jazz have been so damn good this year. Yeah, but Donovan Mitchell's out, right? Or is he back? I think he's out. He's I mean, Brooklyn. I, I feel like Brooklyn's got to be everyone's favorite, right? Just because they've been sitting yeah. everybody, resting everybody up, getting everybody ready to go, and I just don't want to pick them because I hope that they lose. Well, then, what about the storyline of like? I, just I would love the to... I would love the Nuggets to win. That would be that's my pick because I want them to win. Yeah. Jokic would have to go off because Jamal Murray just had ACL surgery. So Jokic he's said MVP, right? He could do it. Uh, he should be. Definitely yeah. should be. But LeBron is saying, you know, Steph Curry should be. And that's typical LeBron just like writing his own storylines. So mm-hmm. if they beat the Warriors, that's like, oh, one MVP down and LeBron's ankle. And then they're going to go on and beat, you know, a playing team making the run to the finals. And it's all bullshit because he took like two months off uh resting quote ankle yeah um and it's going to be that storyline is this lebron's greatest postseason ever to accomplish all of this to go through and it's going to be i'm over it i'm over it i'm such a lebron hater though so <laughs> used to it i am just over all right so let's move over to that side so who's going to win that game if that's that's a big one over by you you're saying golden state lakers tomorrow yeah i mean i'm going to be rooting hard for the warriors um, but I, I don't think they have enough firepower to go against LeBron and AD. Um, but you know, yeah. if something happens, if AD, you know, he's a little fragile, if he goes out of the game. I think they got it. Curry puts up like close to 60 is what's going to have to happen. <laughs> Could happen. Don't think it's going to though. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I got the Lakers in that one as well. So they would play, they would move on to play Phoenix and golden state would play the winner of the Memphis Spurs game who, I mean, I would take Memphis in that one. You think so? Uh, I'm a big Memphis fan. I like that squad. I like Valanciunas. I like um, John. John Morant, of course. Um, I think I like An- Anderson's pretty good. Yeah. Spurs got some decent pieces. Um, big jo- De- 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 DeJounte Murray fan. Yeah. You yeah. know, Keldon Johnson, I thought was going to have a bigger year than he did. He kind of was hot, I feel like, in the beginning and then just didn't really do much. Yeah. Uh, it's they're, they're a quiet team. No one's talked about the Spurs at all this whole entire season, like at all. I don't mm-hmm. even think they were once like broadcasted. Uh, but you, you can't knock them out and Popovich. And I mean, they were like kind of a young rebuilding team and they got some nice pieces. They need to step up. We'll see. Yeah, Memphis didn't have Jaron Jackson all year either. And when he finally sure. came back, it's, you know, is it easy to slot him, just slot him into the lineup? And are they still developing chemistry there? Um, I think, yeah, Popovich is tough to count out, but I do have Memphis winning that one. So <clears throat> from the West, you're taking who? From the West, I am probably going to take the Lakers. Really? So you I got th- the Lakers that's climbing yeah. out of the climbing out of the gutter. Like as much as I don't want them to, I just climb out of the I think their whole entire or maybe no. Let me switch that. So you got the I'll Lakers the Brooklyn? Is that your I'll take the okay. Clippers? Clippers. Okay. Clippers, Brooklyn. Clippers, Brooklyn. That would be interesting. Is playoff P going to actually be playoff P or is he going to suck like he's been sucking in the playoffs? Yeah, I got to take Brooklyn too. I think I'm going Denver, Brooklyn. Yeah. Those are my picks to click. Giannis and Milwaukee is just, I mean, they're not, I don't know. They're not like dynamic enough to where if one guy doesn't have it that night, like if Giannis gets 
you know, shoots like shit and gets locked up. Like who's stepping up? Chris Middleton, mm-hmm. Eric Bledsoe or Brooke Lopez. I mean, it's just, they're not that deep. Right. Dante DiVincenzo. Also, uh, the Sixers, I don't know. They're the number one seed, I believe, out of the East. And I just, I don't know. I don't like the Sixers. I don't like Ben Simmons in the playoffs. Because he can't shoot. Yeah. I love Embiid. I think Embiid's going to absolutely go off. But I don't think his Robin in Ben Simmons is good enough. Because he can't shoot. (laughs) (laughs) I think you've always hated Ben Simmons for that, for sure. I just don't like people in the NBA who can't shoot. Get off <laughs> like my team. Like Andre Drummond? <laughs> yeah, like I don't want you on my team. Oh, yeah, you were all about him. How did he turn off of the Lakers? Sucks. Yeah, I shouldn't have brought that up. Yeah, he sucks. He sucks. <laughs> you guys were going hard. Still would have taken him on the too. Bulls at that point. We didn't have Vooch at that point. I was like, fuck Speaking it. Speaking of the Bulls, no playoffs once again. Yay. I can't believe it. I can't yeah, believe that that – you know, when, when we, when they made that trade, I was like hundred percent, they're going to make the playoffs now, at least make these damn playing games. Least, and they didn't, these they games. didn't even get there. So uh, let me give you a list of, you know, Woj had recently said that the bulls are interested in Lonzo ball, which I think would be awesome. And so I looked up some of the potential free agents for next year. And I want to get your take on, you know, just give me a percentage. What's the percent chance that these guys are going to be on in a bulls uniform next year. Our percentage. Right. Love it. Let's go percentage. So that's zero to a hundred, Dan. <laughs> that was good improvising there, Evan. <laughs> All right. Kyle Lowry is the first one. Uh, 10. 10%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What about Chris Paul? These are, these are all potential. Something they may have to opt out of their okay. current contract, you know, uh, didn't even cross my mind. The the percentage that I want it to happen or that the likelihood it will happen? The likelihood it will happen. 50%. Okay, that's a pretty good... That's high. I mean, 40%. That's pretty high. Okay. I don't know percentages. 40%. Okay. John Collins. Mm, 2%. Really? You just can't see that one working with... We, we just traded for Vucevic. Vuce. Yeah. What, are you doing? what if he plays the four? He's not. <laughs> center. <laughs> All right. At Williams might move to the four. I feel like he'd be undersized there. Thaddeus Young quite the a same bit. size. Yeah, but okay. That's a big that's a big I feel like he's a bigger guy down the gets more boards. At yeah. Williams, 19. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like All right, what about Mike Conley? Uh ten percent. Okay. I see that. Kawhi Leonard? Zero. Zero. Okay. Lonzo Ball. 70. 70. Okay. Actually, 85. Yeah. I'm more I'm, confident in that I'm one. I'm pretty sure that that's going to... I think they tried really hard at the trade deadline to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And I think the Pelicans... Because I think... I remember AK... or uh, Yeah, AK came out with something. He's like, I think teams think they're in a position to win when they're not kind of thing. And some mm-hmm. people are holding on the players when they shouldn't be. And I think he was talking directly to the New Orleans front office because... I think they're trying to keep that team together for a playoff run and they didn't make it and he's not going to walk. And I think they're trying to trade uh, and I think they will end up signing him because I think Lowry's gone. So I think that frees up some cash. Felicio's yeah, off the books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Felicio's off the books. Let's moment of silence for uh, Felicio. The worst Bulls contract in the last 20 years, uh, maybe. I, I saw something that over... What was it? Over the length of his contract that he signed, for every point he scored, it was worth like fifty thousand dollars or something like that, or maybe even more. It was like a ridiculous amount of money for like a point that he would score. One of the that's worst absolutely insane. Time. Yeah. So along the lines of uh, the NBA, we followed NBA Top Shot, and we still do, <laughs> you know, on a personal level, not so much on this podcast as much as we did maybe oh, a month man. or two ago when this thing blew up at the end of February. Um, but recently, there's been a lawsuit uh, against Top Shot that alleges <laughs> that that Dapper Labs violates securities laws. I don't know how much, you know, how much legs this, this uh, lawsuit has, um, but an interesting part of this, I guess, is 
they're also saying that the complaint that was filed says um, that investors' money was tied, monies were tied up for so long. Because you know, I don't know if you have access to withdraw yet, but there's a lot of people that still can't withdraw money out of their accounts, and I think this is a big part of that. So it'd be interesting to see what comes of this. Um, and they're if, trying to do that to prove that there was X amount of money in their business so they could like flaunt like how much their worth is, right? Right. And that's take, what they're saying is how that much money circulating and yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so they can get more funding and things like that. So um, I'm interested to see, you know, what comes of this, obviously it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> My investment there is pretty much like at even right now, like I would be breaking, I think I'd be like a hundred bucks up maybe. So at this point, I mean, I'm either going to lose it all or wait it out to see if there's any type of bounce back with the playoffs. I know I said a couple episodes ago that that's kind of what I'm holding out for is the NBA playoffs to see if anything's going to happen there. It's not great to get sued, but I mean, Hey, it's also like you're big enough to get sued. I don't know. Like <laughs> top companies get sued all the time. Maybe yeah. it's just, it's just part of the journey, you know? It's true. I don't know. I'm just trying to get my money so, back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, something we'll keep an eye on. I guess once we find out more about this, we'll talk about it again. Um, but how about we move over to the Cubs? Cubs have been killing it lately. Fun to watch. Fun to watch. Fun to watch. The last couple of games too, like yesterday for sure. Um, with the Nationals coming into town, Lester, it's been a cool pitching, yeah. Schwarber coming back and just kind of you know tipping his hat to the crowd, like that was just awesome. And like KB, you see KB leave him some cat, yeah, a Twix, some, a Twix, Twix out there, or something yeah. like that in the outfield for Schwarber Man. to run out there. That was hilarious. Um, Schwarber hit a homer too. I mean, I know. I I was like, man, I miss Schwarber, and then he like steps to the plate to like batting two twenty with the six homers. I'm like, all right, <laughs> I miss him, but he's still the same player. And same guy. Yeah, I don't miss the swing and misses with runners on. But yeah, he had a home run yesterday. It's been yeah. a really cool series. I've been watching, like I watch all the tribute videos that they made. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really cool. Really, really cool. Um, also interesting to note, Starling Castro's on the Nationals and there hasn't been any, like they, there was never a thank you. But I mean, we're a little older Cubs fans, I guess. Not that at all, but mm-hmm. since they won, there's a lot of new fans that maybe don't show Starling the love that he deserves. But yeah, for right sure. Now, I do miss Starlin. Yeah. Favorite. He's still on- young, man. He's still like, he's still got still a lot of life like left in him. Yeah. Baby face. <laughs> uh, who's your favorite player on the Cubs right now? Favorite player right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, Matt Duffy's been killing it. That's your favorite but player right no, now? No, no. Stick, no, stick with it, man. Shoot from the hip. Why is Matt Duffy <laughs> your favorite? If you're talking about just like a, ran- like a random favorite, you know, if, if it's somebody that I'm like, okay, long haul this whole season, it's going to be Chris Bryant. That's not what I asked. I just Bryant's asked right an absolute stud. favorite player. If I had to buy a Jersey, it'd be Chris Bryant. Uh, but Matt Duffy has been killing it, man. I like these guys that kind of rise out of the ashes a little mm-hmm. bit and just tear it up. Even if it's just for a part of the season, um, I'm a huge fan of them because I feel like that, that goes a long way. And like at the end of the year, uh, it's not like celebrated as much, um, especially if you don't win. But I mean, yeah. Like these guys that come in and they just like kill it for like two months and then, you know, somebody comes and takes their position or like a, a Nico Horner or somebody gets called up and kind of plays and then they're out of there and they're a bench bat again. Um, I really like when, when those guys just step in and absolutely kill it. I so. feel like a Matt Duffy is like a, a youth baseball coach, like talking point. Like, look at this guy. Look how he plays. Comes to the plate ready. You know, makes contact, <laughs> drives the ball to where they aren't, you know, kind of thing. Like, yeah, he's, they he's used to be Ben Zobrist. Yeah, yeah, he's that kind of player. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Somebody that you don't expect, but they come through in the clutch. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. Duff Man's uh, killing it. What about you? Is that who you were thinking to? Uh, no. I, if I'm like shooting from the hip right now, favorite player, Nico Horner. Um, I just think he's a stud. And I was watching the game today, right before we got on, and he was like, just balls out to just get these ground balls going up the middle. And he's not even making the throw, but he's keeping the ball in the infield. He's making like these crazy efforts to just kind of knock everything down in front of him. And I just remember uh, being in San Diego last year uh, was the first series he got called up in. And he was, if you remember like last year when he got called up, he just absolutely, was it last year or two years ago? It must've been two years ago because fans. So two years ago when he got called up, um, I think it was two years ago. And he was just like on a, on a hot, hot streak 
like right away. He like, hit a couple doubles uh, for that season. It was just he's a California guy as well, so it was like his whole family was there. We were sitting. Near oh yeah, one of those. Them. So it was a cool little thing, and I was just watching him make those plays at second, and he made that huge play last night. And I was like, I need to get like maybe maybe like a Nico Horner jersey is my next jersey. Maybe he's going to be like the next kind of, you know, era of you know, ten plus year Cubs, you know, stalwart at second base. Maybe him and him and Ed Howard when Ed Howard comes up and plays yeah. short. Speaking of Ed Howard, does he play for the? Is it the Myrtle Beach Pelicans? Have you seen their beer? that they've been advertising oh, the the beer oh, yeah we oh, posted yeah. about it yeah yeah no oh, man i love that thing i want Dollar one of those beer so in a baseball bat yeah awesome give me that and they were they were like getting so much uh like were so many responses on twitter they said it was just absolutely insane yeah people wanting those things and having them shipped to them they're like no you have to come to the game sorry but uh, you and I play in fantasy baseball this week. How are you feeling about at that? Our score. I'm up 43 <laughs> to 31, by the way. Damn. Um, I just had one of my pitchers. I had this Wescar you know, okay. he's a uh, Atlanta Braves pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> no idea if that was France. Correctly. Sounds like the so. restaurant you ran out of earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy has been tearing it up this year. But now he's out for a few months because he punched a wall in the dugout after and fractured his hand. So you yeah, hate to sounds, see that. It sounds exactly like Jesus Luzardo that I have from Oakland, like the stud pitcher. Yeah. It's just like after his last start, he got lit up. And they're like, it appeared he had a broken hand before he went out. There. I'm like, bullshit. This guy like punched a wall after he got lit up and broke his hand. Yeah. At least they hit the, you know, the story. This yeah. Atlanta is just like, hey, I busted his hand. You guys all saw it on TV. He just punched yeah. the wall. Oh, speaking but, of Kevin Pillar. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Did you see that? Yeah. Just blood pouring out of his. Did you see the photos of him? Today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy asked like him, like, how he's doing. rounds with Mike Tyson just taking it straight <laughs> to the face. So one of the reporters, like, asked him how he's feeling. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling <laughs> fine. It's like, dude, are you sure? You look like you just got a bar fight. <laughs> Imagine being the reporter. Yeah. So how's it going? How you, how you doing? I just took yeah. a hundred mile an hour fastball to the face <laughs> yesterday. God. What a dick. But both of us. So like I, I picked up Jared Klanick, Uh I've been talking about him a little bit here and there. Uh -huh. You picked up Logan Gilbert, who I think yep. is an interesting Seattle Mariners pitching prospect. Mm -hmm. So there's here's some other fantasy baseball prospects because his fantasy baseball prospect season. season. Yep. Um, Andrew Vaughn was somebody at the beginning of the year that was hyped up. Uh, he got dropped in our Vaughn. league. <laughs> Is there? I don't no. think so. Um, There's so no, many kids of former players in the league now. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, say no. Not All right, let me look this up real fast. Mobile um, kids. <laughs> But uh, Vidal Brujan is another one that I'm keeping an eye on for Tampa Bay. He's a second baseman. Wander Franco is a top prospect for Tampa Bay as well. I think he's might be the number one prospect in baseball. Um, so these are guys just to keep an eye on your fantasy baseball waiver wire if you're playing fantasy baseball. Mackenzie Gore has been somebody that's been hyped up for San Diego for a, for while, a long huh? time. Yeah, yeah, they just have so many good pitchers. You know, Ryan Weathers, this guy, Brian Weathers has been killing it. Um, I think he's been splitting time with – Denelson LeMay, Lamet, Lamet, uh, they've been splitting like starts, um, but both those guys are good. So it's it's hard to see him finding a spot in the rotation, but they're saying he's a future ace. You see somebody to keep an eye on. And then another guy that I thought was really interesting is William Contreras, Wilson Contreras' brother. Mm -hmm. on a, he's not a catcher for Atlanta. He's filling in um, for Darno since he's been hurt. And Contreras, his brother, William, has been killing it. So he's somebody that I would pick up too. If I think if you're looking for a catcher, those are hard to find in fantasy baseball. Um, and then one other guy I was saying here, Alec Manoa, triple A East pitcher of the week last week, he struck out 12 guys in his debut. So he's a pitcher for the blue Jays. Um, so these are all just names to keep an eye on, take a look. Uh, somebody that you might want to pick up if you're in need of pitching. Cause I know in our league, especially it's like pitching it is, dominates. It dominates and it's hard to find, man. There is mm -hmm. like nothing on the waiver wires. And actually today I picked up Miles Mikolas. He's going to be coming back. Um, he's doing re some rehab starts right now. He missed all of 2020 to repair a forearm strain uh, and his pitching arm and cinder guard I have on my bench as well. He's coming off Tommy John surgery. So I'm putting a lot of stock into these guys coming off these major injuries. I don't yeah. know how well that's going to pan out, but you know, these guys are free. They're on the wire. There's, you know, not rostered everywhere. So pick them up if you need some pitching. Yeah, and you're lucky I got DeGrom on the IL right now. 
um, Luzardo as well on the IL. And I picked up Sixto Sanchez, who you were like all about at the beginning of the year, I remember. Did you roster him at the beginning of the year? I did, yeah. I had him for a while. Um, and then he got hurt. And I didn't know when he was going to come back. And I needed to pick somebody up. It's just, you know, in our league, um, I I only put one IL spot, which is tough. Sucks. It's been tough for everybody with COVID, with all these injuries. Yeah. Um, the you know, especially with a short mission or move. <laughs> shortened season last year. I should have anticipated that more people would be getting hurt. Um, but I like it. It's keeping it interesting. Like, if you have a good player that gets hurt, like, you have to drop him and you got to pick somebody else up if you want to win this week. And, you know, you yeah, got to make that decision. Like, play. am I playing long term or am I yeah. playing for this week? So, um, there are a few teams that are like 0 and 6 or 1 and 5. So I think they're like, okay, I have to drop them. And I just think it adds a little bit of a wrinkle to the, mm-hmm. to the league. But uh, yeah, there's not a lot of good people it's to tough. pick up as it is on the <laughs> <It's> wire. <tough. laughs> yeah. It's tough with that one IL spot. I mean, For at least sure. you should have done offense and pitching having an IL spot, but no, the guy just did one. No, you got to play it off Frankenstein's fat foot like the rest of us. <laughs> and I feel like, was this like talked about in our league at all? Did you just kind of maybe like forget about it and just that's it was the same it as like it is type yeah, of thing? a couple of years ago when we played okay. um but yeah should have known with COVID and stuff too yep so, all right man this has been i don't even know what episode is it episode 13 i think Sounds so right let's go with 13 so. episode yeah. 13 uh just want to thank you guys for listening as always check out we do have our new youtube channel as well we'll be posting the video tomorrow same with the episode uh, so just, you know, YouTube search domestic draft, you'll find us there. Um, yeah, you get the uncut, uncut version of our podcast episodes. So all of our outtakes and stupid. Yeah, you can know, see me my dog going down, <laughs> stop chasing his tail. Yeah, right maybe you heard my baby stuff. in the background. Who knows? Yeah, this is live. This is how we do it. <laughs> every Tuesday night, bringing new episodes every Wednesday. Thanks for listening. Peace. Peace.